Hello ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining my channel once again. I just wanted to acknowledge the passing of Grandmaster Yuri Averbach uh, from the old Russian uh, chess school. Um, definitely an influential player uh, in his own right. I mean, there are several opening systems attributed to them. Probably the most popular one and well-known is the Averbach system in the King's Indian with Bishop G5, which was actually taught to me by a Grandmaster uh, Leonid uh, Udassin uh, some years ago. Uh, it's a great system for uh, basically playing against a real aggressive uh, King's Indian player. It's uh, That Bishop G5 can be quite uh, annoying to the uh, general plans of black. Um, besides Bishop G5 in the uh, King's Indian, uh, Bishop E3 is also attribute, attributed to them to him. It's like a semi averbach system. And another system that is attributed to GM Averbach is in the modern uh, defense. And of course the position uh, it's C4, D4, and E4 with the knight on C3. So it kind of looks like you're going into a King's Indian, but that is also attributed to him. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Averbach was also a, a great uh, theoretician and probably um, uh, most known for his uh, end game uh, analysis and, um, um, you know, books that, um, you know, he published uh, over the over the years. So... Uh, just like Korshnoi, um, he devoted a large portion of his life to those uh, 64 squares. And uh, I think that we are all better for it. I'm sure he influenced countless players uh, throughout the years. And of course, then they go on to influence other players, etc., etc. But when you trace it back, it goes back to players like, uh, you know, Averbach and Botvinnik and Korshnoi and, and players uh, like that uh, whose influence uh, we feel today without even uh, knowing it. So what I want to do is uh, show um, what I feel is one of Averbach's uh, finest games. Um, he was involved in a famous game uh, in 1953 Zurich uh, tournament. Uh, against Kota, but he was on the losing end and I think that's probably the game that he is most well known for uh, That was a fantastic game in the old Indian defense where Averbach had the white pieces and Kota played the old Indian Kota actually played the old Indian defense twice in that tournament and um, actually it's uh, due to his games in the old Indian uh, Kota that is um, that inspired me to start playing the old Indian defense uh, years ago but I didn't want to show a, a loss from Averbach but I wanted to show him on the uh, winning side I would like to add though that he did live uh, past 100 years old so um, that's a win in my book I mean if you live that long I mean yes the family I'm sure is sad and um, of course as they should be but and his friends are sad, but that is that's uh you can't complain if you if you make it to uh, three digits in this life. So let's look at the game from Buenos Aires, um, Argentina versus uh, Soviet Union in 1954. Averbach has the white pieces and he's going against Argentinian Grandmaster Oscar Pano, D4, Knight F6. C4, G6, Knight C3, Bishop G7, E4, D6, King's Indian, Bishop E2, Castles, and now Bishop G5, and there is your Averbach variation there. C5, D5, A6, A4, restricting Black's counterplay. All right, that is one of the core um, goals of this system is to restrict all of Black's um, normal counterplay activity that he would get when you play the other lines in the King's Indian. All right, Queen A5, Bishop D2, now E5, 
in G4. Notice also how Averbach has kept that knight on G1. Knight E8, H4, F5, H5, F4, and G5. And of course now black uh, uh, is in a little bit of trouble here. And um, white is able to control the opening on the, of the files on the king side. Rook F7, Bishop G4, Queen D8, Bishop takes C8, Queen takes C8, Knight F3, Bishop to F8, King E2. All right, the king is nice and cozy there and safe, and the rooks are connected on the first rank. Rook G7, Rook H4, Knight D7, opening up the H file. Queen h1. Notice how <clears throat> in this system, it's white who is attacking on the king side, right? Usually, you'll see with the uh, other systems, the classical systems, white castles on the king side, and uh, usually he comes under some pressure on the uh, on that side of the board. The f4, f5, etc. The bishop is on c8 and trying to provoke h3 from white and sacrifice there and. Um, you know, of course, white has found a way, theoretically, nowadays to do well, but um, that still attracts many King's Indian plays, is that potential to attack, attack, attack on the king side. The Averbach system uh, makes that very hard to do, at least that direct attack on the king side. Bishop b7, and now rook h8 check, king f7, queen h6 from panel, knight f8. Rook H1. So, white's pieces are well placed, but how to progress? Rook B8. How to progress the attack? How to keep moving forward? And it seems like Black is gonna being is able to hold there on the king side, hold White at bay, and then start breaking through on the queen side. Bishop takes F4. Very strong move. Um, Panel may have overlooked this move. Very strong move. Can you see White's follow-up? Well, first Black played Queen C7. The idea is if E takes F4, Rook H4, and capturing the F4 pawn. All right, this is all based on the King's cramped quarters. And White will have no problem getting his material back and then some after queen c7 queen h2 was played and now knight d7 notice also even after queen c7 queen h2 so you might say surely now black can take the bishop on f4 Nope. The idea is, well, first let me show you what white, uh, White's idea is. Now, the threat that uh, Averbach poses is, let's give White another move. Bishop takes e5 here. D takes e5. Knight takes e5. Check. All right. And that is going to be mate unless Black gives up his queen. And that's the idea behind queen h2 is to sacrifice now on e5. So knight d7 is played in order to support the e5 square. Now queen h3 threatening mate on e6. Knight f8. Praying for repetition. But rook takes f8. Check. King takes f8. And now queen e6. Rook g8. And now knight h4. Fantastic move. If bishop takes e5 here, d takes e5, and knight takes e5. That's possible also. But Averbach played knight h4. Fantastic move. It's amazing to see how helpless black is in this position. Bishop d8 in order to 
Get the queen involved in some defense here. Knight takes g6 check. Now king g7. If rook takes g6, then simply rook h8 check. King g7. And then queen g8 mate. And of course, if the rook goes back, that's going to be mate too. The rook goes to g8. So, king g7. Knight takes e5. And Pano resigned. Reason is, is after knight takes e5, let's say, um, random move, bishop takes g5, bishop takes g5, king f8, bishop h6, queen g7, and knight g6 is going to be mate, because it's pinned on the queen, I just wanted to show you that. Uh, also possible is, um, say king f8 here, and just knight d7 check, and of course... King g7, rook to h7, nice uh, uh, decoy sacrifice, drawing the king over to the h-file, and then queen h6, mate. So in lieu of all of those threats, uh, Pano resigned. Amazing, um, amazing game uh, here. Uh, and this is early on, of course, in King's Indian uh, theory. But um, it's interesting uh, to see whites work or against the dark squares all right because a lot of times this when the center is locked like this we give up on playing in on, on those squares we just say we just say in our mind you know what the center is locked and we start playing on the wings which is what you're supposed to do theoretically but this game shows that you can't overlook that the opportunities the tactical concrete opportunities that exist and sometimes you can just take those pawns So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Powerful uh, chess in his prime, uh, Yuri Averbach. And uh, I'm glad that we record chess games so that we can enjoy them uh, forever and ever as long as uh, we are here. And uh, I'm appreciative of these masters that played before us and laid out the theory, the foundation, and, um, you know, passed on the joy and love they had for the game to the future uh, generation. So with that, I need to say rest in peace, Yuri Averbach. And, um, you know, thank you for becoming a chess player.